I went to the motor pool the next morning and met a nice fellow who was driving a dump truck to the garbage dump and back for months. He said once in a great while someone would take a shot at the truck. As we proceeded to the garbage dump, people started to jump onto the truck to get first pickings of the new garbage coming into the dump site. There were men and women, both kids and old people, but some men that were of fighting age that looked to me should have been in the ARVN army or members of the local VC. I had to shoot up into the air and point at them with my M16 to let them know to get off of the truck. I didn't want a grenade thrown into the cab of the truck or a shot from a handgun to end our lives. This was just too much disorganization for me. There were at least a hundred people hanging out at the garbage dump. They were almost all wearing discarded American jungle fatigue shirts which were very bulky on them in which they could have an explosive or a weapon concealed underneath. It gave me a very uncomfortable feeling. I learned throughout my life to look into a person's eyes to know what to expect from them. This was especially important in Vietnam where most people wanted the Americans dead and would kill one or more if they could get away with it. It was more than a few times I had to talk with my rifle movement when I saw eyes of hate staring at me. I would point the rifle directly at such a person and then quickly move the rifle barrel to the side in a get lost gesture before I put a bullet into you, meaning speaking without speaking. It was a little discourteous but very effective. War is raw spelled backwards and nothing is more raw than war. Life or death, your choice if you're lucky. All in all, the people at the garbage dump were doing their best just to survive, and I certainly understood that. The driver and I would hand out extra sea rations we had to the people at the dump. It was a kind act and also a diplomatic one. It might be more than once that my life was saved by being kind to people in Vietnam. When people see you as friendly and kind, word gets around and someone may say to a fellow who wants to kill you, not him, he's okay. I truly think that happened on the bunker line 10 months ago when I befriended the two fellows who were probably VC cadre and in charge of digging tunnels under the bunker line in our area. I gave them food and money figuring they were poor workers, maybe they were, but they disappeared into thin air when a tunnel was found under our bunker line right where they lived under plywood on top of 55 gallon drums. The Vietnamese people are typically very smart much smarter than we juvenile delinquents in green clothes who are fighting the war. I got such a kick when someone told me we soldiers fighting in Vietnam were called juvenile delinquents in green clothes by some North Vietnam radio propaganda woman. We certainly were not the valedictorians of our age group, ha, huh? but we certainly in my opinion had a lot more courage and street smarts than the college boys our age. We were rough around the edges and tough. The rough and ready type for sure. Juvenile delinquents in green clothes gave me a good laugh. It was mostly true. She had us pegged. The garbage dump at Dong Tom or at any other base camp for that matter was a gold mine for the poor people in Vietnam. And everyone was poor in Vietnam. The army threw away food by the cases, clothes, cans, lumber, construction material, and anything else one could imagine. These items would be picked up and used for eating and the construction of houses. Some of the most interesting houses were made of flattened cans. Very colorful indeed. Probably a way to describe many Vietnamese in a narrow light would be to say that they are brilliant at improvision. The materials in a garbage dump could be enough to build an aircraft with imaginative minds at work. Certainly what I have observed is that an NVAVC soldier could be standing, sitting, or lying right in front of you, and unless he moved, you would not see him. This happened to me on occasion. Luckily, the person was either trying to be taken prisoner or he was not inclined to shoot at me at the time, but as the helicopter moved, he then began giving himself away by shooting at me inaccurately, luckily. Anyway, the garbage dump held many treasures for the poor people of Vietnam, and I truly felt sympathy for them. It was a life lesson never to be forgotten. Just being alive and have something to eat was enough.